Hey, Dana Epp here, AKA Silver Star on Try Hack Me. I'm gonna walk you through my challenge room, Lumberjack Turtle, to show you how I would go about um, attacking this room. We'll show you the kill chain all the way through the initial recon to find a web exploitation to get inside to a container, finally break out of that to get to the actual host. I'm also going to show you how you could bypass almost all of that and get to the host in just a few minutes if you knew what to be looking for. So there's two different paths we're going to show you. The one's the the intended path to actually practice things like JNDI injection and Docker escape that's done through things like C group, but We'll also show you the the, the fast way uh, if you know what to look for. Hopefully you'll learn something from it, and if not, it'll be entertaining just to see how we go about it. Let's jump into console and just check it out. All right, so I've already spun up Lumberjack Turtle on Try Hack Me. I've connected up with OpenVPN, and I've already mapped the IP address in my host file to Lumberjack Turtle. Uh, we'll do a quick Nmap scan to see what's sitting over there. So we can see there's two ports, pretty standard. There's an SSH port and a web server. What we'll do now is we'll just quickly do a deeper scan and see what's really going on on those. Mostly to get the uh, thumbprint and fingerprint of the services there and try to get a good idea of what's going on. While that's running, we'll also, might as well run a Nikto scan since we know there's a web server sitting over there. So one of the things we can see when we're looking at the port 80, it's a pretty standardized web server that's there. We could probably do a quick look, see what's running there. Well, that's very interesting. Not a lot of HTML or anything. It's just a very basic uh, response. What are you doing here? There's nothing for you to see. Grab some Java and look deeper. All right, so we want to look deeper. Easy way for us to start at this point then is we know there's a web server sitting here. Nikto's doing us some, some research. Oh, there's interesting here. Uncommon header, file f.txt. We'll come back to that. We'll use that when we go through the fast path because that is an interesting finding that we can uh, leverage if we know what we're doing. In the meantime, what we want to do here is uh, let's do some uh, directory recon. So I'll just kind of jam this in. So I'm just going to run Ferex Buster. Um, we're going to use the standard common word list from uh, Seclists, and we'll use uh, TAC E to go into any links that it finds, TAC F to be able to put a slash at the end to be able to look for directories, uh, TAC T100, not something you would do on a normal production system, but let's spin up 100 internal threads just so we can bang on this thing and see what we find. So we already see that we found a uh, logs directory and we found the log for J directory. So if we go take a look at what's in the logs directory, no logs, no crime, we can look deeper. If we look in the log for J directory, ah, hello vulnerable world. What could we see here? Now here's the interesting thing. Sometimes when you curl this fast, you're not looking at the the uh, response headers, which is something Burp's really good about. But you can look at the response headers using the minus V. And if you did that, if you do that, which I normally would do, what you can see is there was a response header that was basically in your face telling you that there's a XTHM hint here that you have CVE 2021-44228 against X API version. So that's the log for shell attack vector. And we have this uh, X API version. So, okay, well, we know what that's, that th this is where we want to be. What can we do about it? Well, the easiest way would be for us to do something like just start up a, a netcat listener on 1389 
and then over on on this side we can just fire off uh, a header with a standard uh, JNDI uh, injection payload. And so what this should do theoretically is that if that uh, endpoint is vulnerable, then it should uh, fire back an LDAP request onto 1389 over on the left side. Sure enough, we do see that this is vulnerable endpoint. Great, so now we can work with that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is spin up a rogue JNDI server and allow us to be able to feed it an exploit to give us a shell so that we'll be able to get onto the system. Um, let's see if I remember this, L host, and then it would be whatever your ton zero IP is. And then what port you want to listen to when the systems come back. Depending on what you're running, um, you'll have your own server doing different things. Uh, in my case here, this one's uh, pretty, pretty simplified. I will need to set up uh, Netcat Listener. I'll run Pwncat for this. And with any luck, okay, so we actually now have a shell on that target, which is good. That's exactly what we want. So we'll just go onto the machine, see where we're at. We're running as root, but we also see there is a Docker env there, which pretty much tells us we're inside a container. To verify that though, because we do want to make sure we know what's going on, we can go to cat proc one status, pipe that to grep cap. That will allow us to see what capa uh, capabilities that we have and our effective capabilities is this. That's an interesting magic uh, number if you don't know what that is. So we'll come back over here. If you were to do uh, cap sh minus minus decode, you'll be able to see all the permissions that that is effectively giving you. And of course, what we can see through there is cap sys admin and uh, that's pretty bad. So it ends up if you ever see this, um, with the uh, three F -F 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 -F. that's actually telling you that's a privileged container. And that's like, you see it in the wild, but you're not supposed to see it in the wild. You're not supposed to be running like that. But knowing that it's a privileged container, this gives us an opportunity to take advantage of it. So um, what we're going to do is follow the container escape for privileged containers documented well everywhere. So not gonna explain it in too much detail. Um, we're going to create a C group uh, and mount it. We're going to tell Linux kernel to run our code um, when the C group finishes, anytime it executes. Of course, I'm gonna need to figure out where these container files are stored. And if we were to take a look at what host path is, we can see that the it's in the overlay to that ID on the diff, which is great. We're gonna tell the release agent where to go have fun. We're gonna map it to a, a file called exploit. And then of course we need an exploit. In our case, we will have it run A bash river shell, why not? We'll make sure that that exploit is executable. Start up another Pwncat shell so we can capture this.
and trigger it. All right. And if we take a gander here, we can now see that we're uh, outside of that container. Now, how did I know about that? Well, obviously, if we were to do a PSAWX, we can see we have very little running inside the container. We saw the Docker and and we took a look and look at the like, uh, uh, capabilities and saw that we were set up in a way that gives us a lot of extra privileges. But if we go and take a look, same thing over here. Obviously, there's a lot more running and uh, we're in there. So if you were on the container trying to find your flag, you could do something simple like find And we can see the first flag was in opt.flag1. But we'll notice that we don't see anything else there and no root flag sitting there. But we're looking over on this side, um, we would have the ability to uh, look for that same thing and slash this type. Of course, we can see that it was right there. Of course, the flag may not have been called or named flag. So another way that we could have done this if we really wanted to, which probably is a little better on a lot of these systems, is we could just grep for, in this case, uh, THM curly brackets, exclude um, proc dev and sys, and see if we can find it another way. And that'll just keep going for a bit. So there you have it. There is getting all the way from uh, initial recon into the container, escape the container, and get to the host and, and get the root flag. Now let me reset everything, and then I'll show you the, the fast way. All right, so now that we went through Happy Path and we know exactly how you could go about beating this box, let's talk about a, a quicker way that you could do it if you knew what to look for. Remember when we were doing that Nikto scan and I had mentioned that there was an interesting finding in the uncommon header in the content disposition and that it was looking for inline file name equals f.txt? Well, that actually is an interesting fingerprint. That is actually an indication that the Spring Boot MVC or Model View Controller Framework is being used. And it just so happens that Spring Boot, when you're using its default configuration, has its own JNDI injection vulnerability that you could have used the bypass having to do any of the directory recon and literally just injecting directly uh, against the server. So it just so happens that's in the accept header. And if you were to try to test that in some of the other directories, you wouldn't have found it. But if you go to the root of the box and you fire it directly at it, you will actually trigger and kick off an injection. So from within a couple of minutes of doing that initial recon with Nikto, if you had seen that, you would know that you could fire that off uh, and there's a good chance in the accept header, you would have been able to get there. I noticed some people had actually went that way as their intended path and that wasn't. If you actually have done your standard uh, recon and done your directory enumeration, the way that the web server was responding was walking you directly right down into the log4j directory. But either way works, but this was one way. So once you're on the box, there's a second way that you could have escaped the container. Because it's using the hypervisor through Zen and it's automatically mounting that on Ubuntu, there is a good chance that if you do a fdisk, 
when using privileged containers, it will actually expose the entire host uh, image if it's not configured right. And so for anyone who's running a Docker container with the minus minus privilege flag, there's a good chance that they will have uh, mounted it this way, which means that you could have just simply created a directory and mounted that directly to it. And that would have got you directly on the host disk. So what could you have done with that? Well, you went into root. Obviously you could start go looking around finding the, the root flag, but there was also the .ssh directory. So yes, you could have got the flag and not have to get in there, but listen, when you're wanting to break out of the container, you really want to get actual persistence and get access on the box. You could have put your SSH keys right in there and then you would have been able to SSH right in to the host and that would have got you there as well. So you could have got that whole thing probably end to end three, five minutes, you could have been done the box uh, if you knew to look that way. Otherwise it'd take you probably, as you saw, if I wasn't talking it would have been 10 15 minutes if you knew to look for do the recon especially if you're doing recursive uh, uh, ferox buster you, you really can get and find the stuff and get in there pretty quick so there you go two different ways to get to the box hope you had uh, fun doing it i hope you learned something from it and now if you haven't go check out some of the other rooms that uh, take this on to the next level you, by this time you should be able to do uh, jndi injection very very easily so go try this on something like shaker where you'll be able to take it to the next level and uh, see how you do good luck